Ben, it's Brad with College Sportscast, and we are presented by the Fanboys, Let's Talk Sports, and Sideline Sports. All right, guys, it's Brad with College Sportscast. Y'all may be stuck with me tonight. We'll get through this. We're going to do our College World Series previews. And yesterday, SEC Network had a primetime special release in the 2024 SEC football opponents um, schedule. So it was just the opponents, so we found out the home and away games within the eight game schedule of the sec. We don't know the times and when and the schedule full yet, but we do know the opponents. So it's pretty exciting to see um, what the sec will look like in 2024 with Texas and Oklahoma joining the sec and you get that new look. SEC um, with Texas and Oklahoma in there. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but those are the two main topics that we are going to cover tonight. So uh, right off the bat, we'll get to that. And if you haven't joined us before, welcome to College Sportscast. I am Brad. I have a couple of guys that are with me from time to time. I have Jason Harrison, former Ole Miss point guard, and then I have John Roberts, or a.k.a. Drink Local Beeham on Twitter. Um, and uh, he went to Auburn, is an Auburn alum, and uh, he is um, a huge baseball fan, worked for the baseball team when he was in school, and uh, I am trying to learn a little bit from him and cover some baseball this year. But welcome to College Sportscast. And I am at Bluegrass Brads. If you noticed, one of my posters is missing. I'm doing an event tomorrow, so I've got it. There's normally two posters behind me. I just noticed that there's one, and now I know why. <laughs> so... Usually, there's two back there. There's only one tonight. But, uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm at Bluegrass Brads, and we're sponsoring College Sportscast, the Fanboys, and Greenville Sports Media now. Uh, Greenville Sports Media this week um, is finalizing a deal to be the exclusive media rights
Okay. So I'm not exactly sure if I'm back on the air or not, but I could be. So if I am, I just had a power outage. And then it came back on after a minute or two. And then I had to wait for the internet to come back up. I think I'm back live. I, it looks like I'm back live. So if you are out there and see me on, um, let me know. I'm pretty sure that I am. So I'm not just sitting here talking to myself 100% for the next hour or whatever. So, um, but I was right in the middle of everything and we, I had a power outage for like a minute or two. And then it kicked on and off for just a second, a couple of times. And then when it come back on, I had to reset the internet and it had to come up. So you never know what will happen around here. <laughs> That's for sure. So anyways, in the middle of all that, I had a power outage, and that's what happened. So, um, again, welcome to College Sportscast. Hopefully, I am back on the air. I believe I am anyway. I guess I could check. Hang on just a minute. I might be able to check this, actually. And see if I'm showing on or not. All right. Anyways, I'm just trying to check and make sure that I'm on the air. I don't know that I am or not. Maybe. All right. Anyway, I'll get to it. I think I'm back on the air. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I didn't just want to sit here and talk to nobody because it was, it went completely out <laughs> and I thought I was going to lose the whole thing. But, all right, let's get to it before the power goes out. It's not storming or nothing. I don't know what happened, so I'm not exactly sure. All right, so <clears throat> what we got is tomorrow, June 16th, starts the College World Series. So the College World Series is in Omaha, Nebraska, it's a huge, huge deal for college baseball to get to the College World Series. There's only eight teams remaining in college baseball, NCAA baseball, and they all go to Omaha, Nebraska since, I want to say, 47. Um, I believe it's either 47 or 50. I believe it was 47. Um, and – there's eight teams that go, and this year we have the eight teams set, and we will get to that. I have four on the screen for our Friday bracket, um, and then we have a Saturday bracket with four teams, um, and it's a best – it's eight teams, and each bracket – will have a winner. Um, you have – it's a double elimination bracket. Each bracket will have a winner, and the two winners of the brackets will meet next 
Saturday and Sunday and possibly Monday um, for a two out of three series, best two out of three series for the College World Series final. So the first bracket we're going to talk about is – the surprise of the of the Omaha uh, College World Series is probably all Roberts. They were a four seed, um, and in the original uh, region, they were a four seed in their bracket, and there was only eight four seeds that have ever come out, um, and they are one of the eight. And now they have made it to Omaha. I don't know exactly how many of the eight have made it to Omaha, but I know that at least one has won the whole thing and won the NCAA championship, and that was in 2008 with Fresno State. They were a four seed and won it all. But so this um, Old Roberts team is a really, really good team. Like they have – um, they have a, a great, great team. They score a lot of runs. <coughs> Excuse me. They score a lot of runs. And um, they are 51 and 12 on the year. They, they lost the first game in the Super Region. But before that, I think they had won 21 or 22 straight games in a row. Um, and then they come back and won the next two against Oregon at Oregon, um, defeating them um, in their home stadium and making it to the College World Series in Omaha. They are going up against TCU, who beat Indiana State. TCU was a two, Indiana State was a one, but TCU got to host because Indiana State had Special Olympics there in their town, and the Sycamores did not get to host their region. And TCU's got some really hot bats, and they were killing the ball in the in the region round and done pretty darn well in the super regional round. So this is going to be a tough, tough game. Should be a high-scoring game, I would think. A lot of runs, and I would think between Old Roberts and TCU, it would be a fun game to watch. So that is the um, first game tomorrow. It is at 1 o'clock Eastern time, Old Roberts versus TCU. Then at 6 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night, we are going to get Virginia versus Florida. These were both one seeds. Florida was the number two overall seed, and Virginia was the number seven overall seed. ACC versus SEC, and it should be a fun one to watch. Florida is a solid, solid team. Um they were the first team to win their Super Regional and advance to the College World Series in Omaha, and they have been waiting the longest. Um, they played on Friday and Saturday. They played an early game on Saturday and were done and have been waiting um, all week long to get this game started. They're going to play the late game tomorrow at 6 Eastern time against this Virginia team who – um, is, you know, second or third. They might have been third in the ACC because Clemson was right there um, and got beat out by Tennessee. So, and Wake is the first one. We'll get to them in a, in a bit. But Virginia has a very solid team. Florida led the East this year in the SEC East. And uh, they have Caglione. And uh, he is a – he can kill the ball and he can pitch and he can do it all. Um, and they have a very solid team. And, I, you know, to, to be quite honest with you, I, I would be surprised if Florida loses tomorrow. 
Um, but Virginia is going to give it everything they have, and they are a great team too. I just think Florida is out of these four teams. I think Florida is the team to watch. I think Virginia could be there at the end out of these four teams. But my dark horse is, is Ole Roberts. Um, Ole Roberts has got a great, great team. They just gel together really well. They have fun together on the field. They're fun to watch. They score a lot of runs. You know, they are averaging, you know, eight, nine, ten runs a game for the season. And we're talking 63 games. Um, that's not what they have scored in the playoffs or uh, in the tournament. Uh, they, they have scored even more than that in the tournament on an average. I know they're more than eight or nine. They were at like 12 and a half before the Super Regional and I know they scored around eight a game in the Super Regional, so they should be like 10 runs or something a game um, in the postseason. So uh, they're just fun to watch. I'm going to be um, watching them, um, and uh, hopefully they will make a little run. It's a dark horse. Um, like I said, this is a – the Friday bracket, these teams will play a double elimination tournament. So the two winners uh, will play each other. The two losers will play each other. The two losers will then the, – that loser will be out. The other loser will move on. So it's a double elimination tournament, and the winner moves on to the College World Series final. And like I said, that is the Friday bracket. <clears throat> so then we move on <clears throat> to the Saturday bracket. The Saturday bracket looks like this. This is the College World Series in Omaha. This is the Saturday bracket here. And the Saturday bracket, again, will be played at 1 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. And the first game is Stanford versus Wake. This is two number one overall seeds, region seeds, host, and Wake was the number one overall seed, and Stanford was number eight out of the Pac-12. Um, Stanford was ranked a little higher than that this year. I think they were ranked around fourth. Um, they beat Texas in dramatic style um, late Monday night. To make this, they were the last team to get in to uh, Omaha, and that was really late. I said last team. It might have been Tennessee now that I'm thinking about it. Both of these games were delayed um, Monday night. I think the last one was Tennessee. Uh, but anyway, so – um, Stanford and Wake are going to be going at it. Wake has three pitchers that have been lights out, and they have been flat killing the ball. They scored 22 runs against all, uh, Alabama um, over the over last weekend in the first game that they played, and w won the second one like 10 to three or nine to three or something like that. Um, and uh, they they just been flat killing the ball and. Those pitchers um, are only giving up like two runs a game on an average over their in the postseason, two and a half, something like that. Um, they they had given up none in the in the in the region round. Uh, Alabama did get a few runs on them. They've got five, and I think they scored three the second time, I believe. So um, they're like I said, they're averaging about two runs a game between the games that they've played. Their pitching staff is just flat killing it. Um, and then you have two SEC teams, Tennessee versus LSU. Uh, Tennessee was another game that was really, really late Monday night. That's the one that ended 
well after midnight. They had some um, delays in that game against Southern Miss. They wound up winning that game five to nothing um, early Tuesday morning, actually, um, and uh, advanced to the College World Series. So we have three SEC teams in here. We have two ACC teams with Virginia and Wake Forest. Um, TCU is Big 12. Stanford is Pac-12. And then you have Oral Roberts um, as the surprise and the dark horse. Um, and uh, Oral Roberts is a really good team. Like I said, if I'm picking a dark horse, that would be the team that I would pick for you guys. LSU is a total different monster. Kentucky played them in this in their super regional round. Um, and they just they have guys that are going to be drafted number one, number two, possibly number four, number five, um, in the in the MLB draft like next month. Um, and it shows. When, when they play. I mean, Dylan Cruz is, I don't know which one's going to go number one overall, but I would, I, I would have to think that it, it's between Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens is their ace pitcher who is just damn near unbeatable uh, this year. Uh, and uh, when he starts, and uh, then you have uh, Dylan Cruz that is their top overall hitter. And then you have Tommy Tanks, who that's a nickname. And you can imagine what Tommy Tanks does to the ball. And, you know, so and, – and he's not the only one. They have three or four more um, that can just – I mean, they can just kill the ball, put up some runs – you know, you put up 14 runs for Paul Skeens, and he wouldn't lose if 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 we played, you know, 30 innings. I don't think he would lose when you put up 14 runs um, for Paul Skeens. So uh, if you made him stand out there for 30 innings, I don't think he would lose. Um, so, you know, Tennessee's got their work cut out for them versus LSU. I do expect LSU – to uh, advance there. I also um, am going to pick w w Wake Forest over Stanford in that game. Wake Forest is a, a, a really great team. And then if that happens, then you're going to get Wake Forest and LSU. And that's going to be one whale of a game. They have three great pitchers. And if Skeens goes against Tennessee, that's going to open the door a little bit. LSU, the one weakness they have is day two, day three pitchers. Um, they've given up some runs this year. LSU has lost 15 games. They're 48 and 15. And they've when they've lost those games, it's been in day two and day three starters. And... Wake Forest has three aces that they throw out. I think they can give them a run for their money. I really do. Um, especially if Skeens is not pitching, pitching against them. And I expect that that's probably what's going to happen here. Um, now, if they match up a second time, and Peen, and Peen, and Skeens pitches on Friday, on uh, Saturday, then maybe by Tuesday, if they matched up again, maybe Skeens would go, and I might give the edge to LSU. Um, it really just depends on how this bracket plays out and the pitching, I believe. Um but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the winner of this side of the bracket is either gonna be Wake Forest or LSU. Um, that's where I'm gonna go. I I just 
think that the pitching with the hitting that they have is too strong um, for either Stanford or Tennessee. Um, I'm not going to say that they're not great teams. They've both been ranked in the top ten this year, top five even. Um, but I just think Wake Forest and LSU are, are, are head and shoulders above them when you count the pitching, hitting, and everything on the field. So uh, look for them two teams. Um, and then those games will be wrapped up by Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. I think Thursday might be the day off, the scheduled day off. And then the finals will begin next Saturday, um, a week from this Saturday, uh, which would be the 24th. That's when the finals will start between uh, the two teams that advance. I think that's either going to be Florida and Wake Forest or Florida and LSU. That's where I am at right now. I still can't decide whether it's going to be Wake Forest or LSU. I think it's going to vastly de be determined on how Skeens is pitched um, for LSU because I think Wake Forest has three aces. And if Skeens pitches the, the – Saturday and doesn't get to pitch again against um, Wake Forest, then LSU might be in trouble. And it could be Florida and Wake Forest. But I really like this LSU team, um, and it's hard to pick against them. They have the power. They have the pitching with schemes. They just have a weakness in day two and day three pitchers. So – Look for that to happen, and uh, then, like I said, this is uh, double elimination tournaments here in this bracket. The winner moves on and plays next Saturday and plays the winner of the Friday bracket. And still haven't made a full decision here, have I? But I'm going Florida and Wake Forest or Florida and LSU. And it all depends on how that bracket plays out. So we'll go with that. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put our link tree page up on. There it is. All right, guys, so our link tree page is to the right on the screen there. If you want to scan that QR code, you can go straight to our link tree page, College Sportscast. College Sportscast link tree page offers everything that we do here at College Sportscast. You can find our TikTok. You can find our YouTube. You can find our Facebook page. You can find our Instagram. We have just about everything that you want to offer. You can also find our Reaper apparel code, and that is the shirt that I am wearing. Um, there is a link. If you go to Linktree for our Reaper apparel, and this one is called Time Wasted is Time Lost. And this is one of their shirts. It's a great shirt. I love to wear it all the time, and I have it here on College Sportscast from time to time. You can find that. You can also find our True Victory, and you can find our official merch page as well. There is all kinds of stuff to find. Again, all you have to do is scan that QR code to the right of the screen. It'll take you straight to our link tree page. You can find my Twitter. You can find all kinds of stuff there. TikTok again. So anyways, scan the code to the right of the screen, QR code, or 
you can log on to Linktree slash College Sportscast. All right. Now I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the Real Fresh channel. We are featured on the Real Fresh channel on Sunday Sunday nights. Our show is featured there. Howie Fresh is who this is and runs the Real Fresh channel. He's a friend of mine. He is also a Defan Boys, um, and we are uh, a team member together, and he is going to be um, – or he is on the Defan Boys team with us, and he has a YouTube channel called The Real Fresh Channel. And I want you guys to give a listen and check him out. I'll let him talk. Hey, I am Hal Fresh here to tell you about The Real Fresh Channel. That's right, youtube.com slash The Real Fresh Channel. We are a network aiming to bring you various content each and every day, different types of podcasts, different type of content, uh, anything from college sportcast and, and fresh takes for some sports. We also got You Want to Do What? We got the Wrestling Corner. We got live stream. Just go over to youtube.com slash the real fresh channel and hit us up today. Thank you for uh, checking it out. Appreciate your time. All right, guys, that was Howie Fresh. Y'all go check out his channel at the Real Fresh channel on YouTube. He has lots to offer, other sports shows. He has some comedy clip shows. Um, so he does it all over there. He even does a show for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so go check him out. <clears throat> like I said, he is a Defan Boys team member, so we're always trying to give our team some props. All right. The next thing that I'm going to go to is the SEC 2024 prime time special that came out last night on SEC Network. So made a huge deal out of it. Um, it's been two years um, in the makings. This bombshell that Texas and Oklahoma was joining the SEC happened in July of 2021. So it's been almost two years, and uh, now we know that Texas and Oklahoma is joining the SEC July 1st, 2024. And on June 1st this year, two weeks ago, uh, the SEC announced an eight-game, one-year agreement, eight-game schedule um, for 2024, kind of as a bridge gap <clears throat> to 2025. And the reason why that is is when it was first announced, Texas and Oklahoma was tied to the Big 12 to 2025. So they didn't know if they were going to be able to get out and join. So all the other teams went ahead and made schedules and stuff to till then and now um a lot of the team the all the other teams um have their schedules already worked out and they didn't want to have to cause a huge deal so they're doing a one-year bridge gap um and then they're going to make a decision it might go to the nine games then but here's what they did do they went ahead and dropped the defi d the divisions so it'll be next year, not this year. This year, they're still at East and the West in 2023. 2024 will be the first time that there has not been an East and West division in SEC football since 1992 when um, South Carolina and Arkansas joined the SEC. So we are talking a long time ago. Next year, that would be 32 years. Um, <clears throat> we're talking a long time ago. It'll be the first time that there will not be an East and West division. They're going to take the top two teams, play it out, 
Um, and the top two teams will battle it out for the SEC uh, crown in the championship game, SEC championship game. So it was a, a big deal. You got Texas and Oklahoma that are joining, and they actually come out with Texas and Oklahoma's schedule first. But I'm going to kind of talk and run through this in alphabetical order. And by the way, if you are on with me tonight, go check out uh, my article on this at stadiumrant.com. And I have an article titled SEC Network Primetime 2024 Schedule Release. Check out my article. It's got this entire list of each team's home and away games. If you have not seen it or if you just want to see it in on paper or not on paper, on digital, um, and you want and you just want to be able to see it, um, you can go to my article at stadiumbrant.com, SEC Network Primetime 2024 schedule release. That is my article, and I would appreciate it. While I'm talking about this, I'm going to go ahead and put up our merch page. So to the right of the screen, if you're watching, you can use the our code WATCHCSCAST for our official merch page. You can scan that QR right there and shop for our official logo work and page and uh, we have shirts and mugs and different things there to check out use our code watch cs cast for a 15 percent discount just scan the qr code that's a custom artwork logo so um, you won't be able to find it at other places all right, so we're going to start in the SEC with Alabama. Um, <clears throat> Alabama's schedule looks like this for 2024. Again, this is not for this year. This is 2024. Alabama is going to be playing Georgia in Tuscaloosa next season. That's the huge headliner, and they are going to – Oklahoma. That's their huge away game and their huge home game. They also keep the rivalry um, at home with Auburn. And they're getting to keep the rivalry away against LSU and away against Tennessee next year. So their schedule looks like this. Home games, there's eight games, of guys, so the Home games are Auburn, Georgia, Missouri, South Carolina. Alabama's away games for 2024 is Oklahoma, LSU, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. So that is their schedule. I think that's a pretty tough schedule for Alabama. You get Oklahoma, LSU, and Tennessee away. You have to play Georgia um, and Auburn, which is their huge rivalry game, but they also have to play Georgia at home, um, Auburn, and then you get Missouri, South Carolina, and Vandy. But those are five games for Alabama uh, that is a uh, – that's, that's pretty darn tough games to play. And they're going to Wisconsin in the pre or in the non-conference schedule. So, you know, so they, they're going to have away games, four away games at Wisconsin, Oklahoma, LSU, and Tennessee next season. It's pretty tough. All right, so we're going to move on to the next one. The next one is Arkansas. Arkansas gets – They have a neutral site game with 
Texas A and M, um, and that is um, Texas A and M in Arkansas. They have a neutral site game. Then their home games are LSU, Ole Miss, Tennessee, and Arkansas gets Texas coming to their house. Again, they just did this a couple of years ago, and they won, and it was a huge deal. Their fan base loved it. They're going to get them in Arkansas again, and this is an old um, rivalry as well, Texas and Arkansas. Um, So, you know, they played this for a a lot of years, and it was – gone when Arkansas joined the SEC up until recently, that one game that I was talking about. Uh, but this this ought to be a really, really fun game to watch between Texas and Arkansas back at Arkansas. Uh, then they are away at Auburn, Mississippi State, and Missouri, and then the Texas A&M game. That is Arkansas's schedule. <clears throat> You know, looking at their schedule, they get LSU and Tennessee and Texas at home. Um, They play Auburn, Mississippi State. They play A&M. But, you know, their schedule is they have some big names there, and it is a a tough schedule. But they get three of those guys at home with LSU, Tennessee, Texas. um, And they play, um, you know, Auburn, Mississippi State, Missouri, and Texas A&M. But I think – All of these schedules are tough because 16 teams now in the SEC, this is no joke. Um, But I think Auburn getting those at home is is kind of a big deal. All right. I said Auburn. Arkansas. Auburn's who I'm going to next. Arkansas getting those three games at home is a big deal. Auburn's schedule for 2024, their home games – are Arkansas, Texas A&M, Vanderbilt, and they get to bring in Oklahoma uh, to play a home game at Auburn. That ought to be a fun game as well. Uh, Their away games are – they play two really tough ones. They play Alabama and Georgia away. Then they play Kentucky away and Missouri away. So – When you look at their schedule next year, you get Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M at home, and then you have Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, and Missouri on the road. Auburn has a pretty tough schedule. All of these schedules are unbelievably tough. Everybody's been whining and crying that the SEC is not going to add this ninth game. Well, all of these teams, by the way, have a ninth game against a power conference opponent on top of all this. Just like I was talking about Wisconsin is added to um, Alabama's schedule. All of these teams have that. And the next one I'm going to talk about, I'm going to dig in even a little bit deeper. Florida's schedule looks like this. They get Kentucky at home, LSU at home, Ole Miss, and Texas A&M at home. Their away games are Mississippi State, Tennessee, Texas, and Georgia in the greatest cocktail party, uh, you know, and Jacksonville, like where it's always played at. So they're playing Texas A&M, LSU, Tennessee, Texas, Georgia, all right, Kentucky, Ole Miss, Mississippi State away, which is a tough place to play. I mean, Florida's schedule looks very daunting for Billy Napier. And on top of this, guys, Florida plays three power five schools next year in 2024 on top of this eight-game SEC. They play 11 of their 12 games 
against power conference foes. They are also playing Florida State, Miami, and UCF. Florida has a no-joke schedule for 2024. I am sitting here telling you, Billy Napier has his job cut out for him. I'm telling y'all, it's a very daunting schedule. I think, you know, that would be his third year. I think you'll see a little bit of improvement from last year. This coming year, I don't think you'll see Florida where everybody thinks Florida ought to be. And then when you look at this schedule, playing Kentucky, LSU, Ole Miss, and Texas A&M at home, then playing Mississippi State, Tennessee, Tennessee and Texas on the road, and Georgia, and then playing Florida State, Miami, and UCF. Um, I just – I don't know, guys. I'm telling you, I think Billy Napier has his work cut out for him. That's all I'm going to say about that. Y'all can debate that all you want, but I believe Billy Napier has his work cut out for him. All right. <clears throat> then we're getting to Georgia. And the Georgia Bulldogs have a much, 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 much tougher schedule in 2022. And again in 2023 here, there is a wide, wide talk. And it is true. I think it's true that their schedule is not that tough. Um, you know, they had Tennessee and Kentucky last year. South Carolina was okay. Again, that's what you're looking at this time. And – you look at this 2024 schedule, and here, and I'll, and I'll give you a kicker at the end of this. So 2024, <clears throat> they keep their rivalry with Auburn. 81 straight years they will play this game. Georgia versus Auburn, home game. Mississippi State at home, and they get Tennessee at home. Then they play Florida on their neutral site. Then they play at Alabama, at Kentucky, at Ole Miss, and Georgia goes to Texas to play in the SEC next year in 2024. So they have Auburn and they have Tennessee. They have Florida. They have Alabama. They have Texas, they have Ole Miss, they have Kentucky, they have Mississippi State. And the big kicker to all of this is in 2024, Georgia and Clemson are scheduled for a non-conference matchup early in the year. You're talking about a fun schedule. I mean, guys – Georgia's the two-time defending champs. They are, they are, everybody's talking about them like they have a lot to replace, and, and it's going to be very interesting to see. But I was I was watching Paul Feinbaum today, and they had a, a, a national media guy on, not SEC, had a national media guy on, and he was talking trying to talk about teams that he thought, you know, you you look at where they are and you know, possibly could could make a run, you're know, like, well, Ohio State could, but they have to replace their quarterback, and you don't know what that's going to do. And Michigan's been close, and they have some guys back, but you don't, you don't know if they can get over that hump. And you know, you look around the country, Clemson, you know, maybe the guy brought up USC uh, for this coming year, but. When you look at, depending on what happens in 2023, as much as Georgia has won the last two years and how this 2023 season plays out, 
You look at the schedule for 2024, you're going to get Georgia versus Clemson. You're going to get Georgia versus Alabama, at Alabama. You're going to get Georgia at Texas. You're going to get Georgia versus Tennessee. You're going to get Georgia versus Auburn with Hugh Freeze second year. You're going to get Georgia versus Kentucky. You're going to get Georgia versus Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. You're going to get Georgia versus Florida, their natural rivalry, and see how that game goes. That may be one of their easier games. It's just a really fun schedule to look at and to think about what is coming around for next year, for 2024. I think this Georgia schedule is very, very enticing to see. Then you get Kentucky. That's my team, all right? Kentucky gets home game against Auburn, home against Georgia, home against South Carolina, and they get Vandy. I'm very happy to see Vandy on there. Vandy is one of Kentucky's biggest rivals. It's the next state, connecting states, and I'm, I'm very happy to see that Kentucky got to keep five of their East rivals on this schedule. Um, their away games are at Florida. There's a rival. At Ole Miss, at Tennessee, there's a rival. And Kentucky is going to Texas for just the second time in the history of playing college football. And both of them have been playing since the late 1800s, early 1900s. Late 1800s, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this you get – you keep – you get to keep Florida and Tennessee and Vandy and South Carolina and Georgia. There's the five East foes that you get to keep. They um, are playing Auburn at home, LSU. I mean, Auburn at home, Ole Miss on the road, and then they get to go to Texas. Very tough schedule. Look at that and you say, wow, four and four is going to be a tough road to handle. And then they'll play Louisville as well in Brahms' second year, because this year will be his first. So I have our merch page up on the screen, and I want to remind everybody to use our code WATCHCSCAST. Scan the QR code. Go to our uh, official merch page. That's our custom art logo there, and pick you up a college sports cast t we would appreciate it and you can use our code watch cs cast for 15 percent discount all right the next line of the next teams to talk about on the schedules for 2024 is lsu lsu and auburn will not play in 2024 it's not on the schedule guys it's one of the games that i think got left out i mean it's hard to get them all um but if i was picking one game that got left out it would be lsu and auburn lsu and alabama uh they get ole miss and those are the home games. You get Alabama, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, and then LSU gets to bring in Oklahoma. That's into Death Valley. Um, that's going to be a primetime game, man. That's going to be a fun one to watch. On the road against Arkansas, a rival. Florida and LSU has been a big rival over the years. That's going to be an away game. Then they play South Carolina on the road. Beamer, and then they go to Aggies, Aggieland, Texas A&M, um, and play Jimbo um, at 
Kyle Field. So that's a pretty tough schedule, too, when you get Alabama, Oklahoma, you know, Texas A&M on the road at Arkansas. I, I, I do think looking at their schedule that they're missing one or two, and I, I mentioned the one game out of all of this that um, I think is missing, and that's LSU Auburn. When you look at LSU schedule, I think it could fit in there. But when you look at Auburn's schedule, you know, they're already on the road at, at Alabama, at Georgia, at Kentucky, at Missouri. They play Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas AM. Throwing LSU in there was probably a little. But if I could pick one game, and I actually think LSU schedule is one of the lighter sides. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that it's easy. None of these schedules are easy. They're all tough. Um, but – Alabama, Oklahoma, definitely Texas A&M on the road. And, you know, then maybe South Carolina, Arkansas on the road. I mean, you just don't know. I think LSU is better than Florida. I think they're better than Vandy. I think LSU is probably better than Ole Miss. It's still going to be a tough game, but it's at home. So, you know, I, I think that matters for LSU. That's a very, very tough place to play. So I think that matters for LSU. Uh, when you when you're looking at their schedule, um, anyways, just looking at the schedules off the top of my head, that's that's what I had to say about it. So then we're moving on to Mississippi State. Mississippi State schedule is the first one when you're looking at the schedule. Mississippi State's schedule, they've been playing in the SEC West for 30 years. They don't really have an SEC West flavor to their schedule. As uh, Mississippi State plays one, two, three, four SEC East teams in 2024. When you look at their schedule, and then they go to – Mississippi State is another team that goes to Texas. So you get four SEC East and Texas. So that's five of their eight games. The only other games on their schedule is Arkansas, Texas A&M, and Ole Miss. You get the Egg Bowl. Can't leave out the Egg Bowl. That's one of the uh, premier games, uh, you know, long-running games between the last game of the season between Mississippi State and Ole Miss. So their home games are Arkansas. Then they get Florida, Missouri, and at Texas A&M. Then their away games, they get Georgia, Tennessee, Texas, and Ole Miss. You know, when you look at their schedule, they seem to kind of have an SEC East flavor to their schedule, which is a little weird to see for Mississippi State. I saw some Mississippi State fans complaining a little bit, and I want to say this. You can't complain too much when you're not having to play Alabama that you've always had to play for 30-some years, 15, 16 of them with Nick Saban there. You're not having to play Alabama. You're not having to play LSU. You're not having to go to Death Valley. Yes, you're going to Georgia and to Texas.
You get Texas A&M at home. Mississippi State is a tough place to play. You ring those cowbells, tough place to play. You get Missouri, Florida, Arkansas. Those are all games that you can win at home, I think. But Mississippi State can win at home. Should be able to. Um, of course, then you have the Egg Bowl. It's away. And you get Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas on the road, which are three tough games on the road. Four counting the egg bowl. But it could be worse. You could have had you could have had Alabama and LSU up in there, and you know, that you've always had to play. Just saying. That's kind of my take on it. All right, so I'm going to switch this up and go to our true victory page and put that up on the screen. True Victory is a veteran-owned sportswear company that we are a brand ambassador for here at College Sportscast and the Fanboys, and we are asking that you scan the code to the right of the screen and go and shop. You can pick up something for Dad for Father's Day. Father's Day is Sunday. You can pick up something for dad. Matter of fact, you can pick something up that you don't even have to send to him. It's a digital gift card. They have increments of $10, $25, $50, and $100. You can pick up a digital gift card. Use our code to fanboys for a 15% discount so you can get a $100 gift card for $85. All right? And... It's digital. You can give it to him, give him your code, and he can shop and buy something. You don't have to ship it. You don't have to send it. You don't have to anything. It's late. It's it's on Sunday. Today's Thursday. you got three days. If you have not bought something for your dad, buy him a digital gift card from True Victory and use our code to do it. The fanboys for a 15% discount. You can buy a $10 one for $8.50. You can't beat that, guys. Get something for Dad. He deserves it. Got some really cool gear, really cool shirts. So pick something up there for Dad. Use our code to fanboys. Scan that code to the right of the screen. All right, so the next schedules that I'm going to talk about is Missouri is the next one. Missouri has has been in the East since they joined the SEC in 2012. They have been in the East. And you look at Missouri's schedule, and Missouri has a West flavor to their schedule the opposite of what I just said about Mississippi State. So Missouri is playing Arkansas, Auburn, Alabama, Mississippi State, and Texas A&M. Plus, they play Oklahoma. That is six of Missouri's eight games. Missouri's been playing in the SEC East. The only SEC East teams that Missouri is playing in 2024 is Vanderbilt and South Carolina. That's it. Vanderbilt and South Carolina. They for sure look as if the divisions were kept that Missouri should have been in the West, which they should if you're talking about demographics. All right? But they've been playing in the East since 2012. Their schedule looks like this. Home games, Arkansas, Auburn, Oklahoma. It's a big one for Missouri to get them in Missouri to get Oklahoma and Vandy. Their away games look like this. 
They have to go to Alabama, to Texas A&M, Mississippi State, and South Carolina. They play five West teams, Oklahoma, and two East teams, Vandy and South Carolina. Looking at this schedule for Missouri, I think it's an absolute monster of a schedule. Playing Alabama, Texas A&M on the road. You get Mississippi State on the road. That's not easy. You get South Carolina on the road. That's not a great easy place to play. You have to play Auburn and Oklahoma at home. Although Missouri does pretty good, you know, at home at their home schedule. You got Arkansas, Auburn, and Oklahoma, and then you get Vandy coming in there. And Missouri and Vandy have had some pretty good battles since they've been in the SEC. Uh, so, you know, that schedule for them, all of these schedules are tough. You get Oklahoma's schedule next. Let's break this one down. So what they did with Oklahoma and Texas is this. It was 14 teams. Oklahoma and Texas are playing each other. That left seven games for Oklahoma that they needed and seven games for Texas that they needed. So every SEC team is either playing Oklahoma or Texas next year in 2024. Oklahoma and Texas are not playing any of the same teams except for themselves their rivalry, Oklahoma and Texas. They're keeping their rivalry. Oklahoma's schedule looks like this. They get Alabama at home, South Carolina, uh, Shane Beamer, who was a coach there, comes in, and Tennessee comes in with Josh Heupel as the head coach. Their away games, Auburn, LSU, Ole Miss, and Missouri. And then they get Texas at their normal neutral site in Dallas. Oklahoma and Texas. I really love this schedule for Oklahoma. I know Oklahoma fans are saying that it's a little more tough than what Texas schedule is. Um, but I really love this schedule. If you're a fan, you have to love it. See Alabama coming there, Tennessee coming there. You get to see them against LSU. You get to see them against Auburn, going to Auburn. Um, you get to see them against Lane Kiffin. You get to see them against South Carolina and Beamer, and you get to see them against Josh Heupel and Tennessee. I mean, it's a really exciting schedule to see, uh, but that is Oklahoma's schedule for 2024 in their inaugural season in the SEC. It's going to be a fun one, guys. I heard some fans already say, can we just skip 2023 and get to 2024? Because it's going to be fun. I mean, it's going to be a fun, fun season. You got the Big Ten. You got them joining and stuff with the USC and UCLA. It's going to be one heck of a season. Uh, the next teams I want to talk about is Ole Miss. Um, Ole Miss, they keep their Mississippi State game, their Egg Bowl rivalry, of course. Ole Miss does. They also keep their rivalry uh, between LSU, Arkansas, um, Ole Miss plays four of their games are against SEC East teams. So, again, there is a, a little bit of an East flavor to, to Ole Miss. Same as Mississippi State that I said. Uh, Ole Miss is playing Georgia and Kentucky at home. They get Oklahoma at home, which will be a really fun game um, in Oxford. Then you get Mississippi State at home. 
which is the Egg Bowl at the end of the season. And then their away games are Arkansas, West team, Florida, East team, LSU, Ole Miss, and LSU's got a rivalry, and South Carolina. So they play Georgia, Kentucky, Arkansas, and South Carolina from the east. Put Oklahoma in that. That's five of their eight games uh, with either a new team or the SEC East. They're only playing three games out of the eight against the West. Then we're going to go to South Carolina. You got Beamer Ball. This is his second, be his third. So next year would be the fourth year um, for South Carolina. I do not expect that they will have their quarterback. So they'll be looking for a new quarterback in 2024. But having said that, their schedule looks like this. They get four West teams. It's kind of interesting to see how this shakes out a little bit. South Carolina gets LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, and Texas A&M at home. Away is Alabama, Kentucky, Oklahoma, and Vanderbilt. It's a pretty daunting away game, if you ask me. Alabama, Oklahoma, and Kentucky um, are three tough places to play. South Carolina has not had a – they did – they beat them last year. I'll give you credit. But they've not had a great run winning in Lexington. Um, and then you have – LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, and Texas A&M at home. Tennessee. Who is Tennessee going to play in 2024? They keep the rivalry with Alabama. I don't know if it's going to be the third week in October, like it always has been. But they get to keep that game because that was one that everybody was kind of worried about. Um, going keeping an eight game schedule because Alabama and Auburn were going to play, but they get to keep the Alabama Tennessee game. They also play floor, they play their home schedule is Alabama, Florida, and Kentucky. Three of their biggest rivals, their other one is Vanderbilt, and they keep them on as a road game, but their home games is Alabama, Florida, Florida, Kentucky, and Mississippi State. Then their away games are Arkansas, Georgia. They keep the Georgia rivalry as well, Oklahoma, and Vanderbilt. So they play Kentucky, Florida, Georgia, and Vanderbilt from the east. And then Alabama, Mississippi State, and Arkansas from the west. And uh, then they play Oklahoma on the road, Tennessee. That's going to be a fun, fun game. Josh Heupel, <coughs> excuse me, Josh Heupel coming into his old stomping grounds um, and going to try to win a game at Oklahoma. That's going to be a fun one. Then you get Texas. Texas schedule looks like this. Their inaugural SEC schedule. Again, it's all different teams from what Oklahoma had. It's the seven other teams. Texas gets Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, and Mississippi State at home. They get Arkansas, Texas A&M, and Vandy on the road. And then they have a neutral site game with Oklahoma as their main rivalry. So that is Texas schedule. They are playing four SEC East teams, Florida, Georgia, and Kentucky all at home and Vandy on the road. You know, you look at their schedule 
And I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, you get Florida, Georgia, and Kentucky all at home and Mississippi State all at home. And then Vandy going to Texas. I, I just, you know, I can't really see Vandy. Um, I mean, Texas going going into Vandy, I really can't see that being a big challenge. So then they have Arkansas and Texas A&M on the road. You compare that with Oklahoma's schedule. I don't know. I, I mean, I think they're they're pretty even. I think Oklahoma has a little bit, little bit, slightly harder schedule, just slightly. It's not like it's a ton. All right. So then we get to the last two teams to talk about, and that's Texas A and M. Texas A and M schedule looks like this: they get to keep the LSU game. Um, and they keep Arkansas. They also get to add Texas. Texas and Texas A and M will play since the first the first time since 2011 when Texas A and M left the big. I don't know if it was 12 back then or eight. I can't remember now. Um. But when they left that conference, they have not played. And they played, I don't know, I want to say it was like 100 times or something. I mean, they have one of the longest-running rivalries in college football. And this will be the first time that they have played this game since 2011. This will be in 2024. It's going to be an exciting game to watch. They play LSU, Missouri, and Texas at home in at Kyle Field, then they get Arkansas in the neutral site that they play every year. Their away games are Auburn, Florida, Mississippi State, and South Carolina. I think it's a pretty fun schedule for them to keep LSU, get Texas, keep Arkansas. Then you go on the road to Florida and Auburn. Um, you get to go on the road to South Carolina that you don't get to do very often and bring in Missouri at, at home. So they have a – they play Missouri, Florida, and South Carolina from the east. So they have a little bit of a west flavor to their, to their schedule as well. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's a fun schedule for them. Then we get to Vanderbilt. And I will say this. So a lot of the commentators, and I've seen a couple of uh, articles r- reporting that Vanderbilt got the raw end of a deal here or that their schedule is so much harder than everybody else's. I've seen it a couple of times. And I'm going to say this. I'm looking at the schedule here. And, I, I, you know, it's Vanderbilt, and they're in the SEC. I mean, what can you say? I, I don't know how in the world you could operate this schedule and it be – so much easier um, for Vanderbilt in this new SEC. I just don't see it. So their home games, they get to bring in to Vanderbilt, to Nashville, um, Alabama, South Carolina, which they played and have a rival, Tennessee, and Texas. That's a pretty fun home schedule to bring in to Nashville, to Vanderbilt at a stadium that doesn't get full all the time. And when you get to bring in Alabama, Tennessee, and Texas to your stadium, that ought to be a big boost to your to your university. Away, they play at Auburn, at Kentucky, rivalry, at LSU, and at Missouri. I just don't see how you could manage their schedule a whole lot better than that for them. You know, Clark Lee, Clark Lee is going to have to get them going, and they're going to have to pull off a few, couple of two or three wins to um, make a move 
that he needs to, to make to, to manage this schedule. I mean, quite honestly, you know, they're going to have to pull off two or three wins here. And you look at their schedule, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Auburn, Kentucky, LSU, Missouri. Where do they come from? I'm not sure. It's going to be tough sledding for, for Vanderbilt, I think, in this new SEC. It's going to be tough schedule for Kentucky, um, I think, in this new SEC. It's going to be tough sledding, I think, for Missouri in this new SEC. Um, <clears throat> South Carolina, even. Uh, the, you know, so they're going to they're have to dig deep. To, to win in these games. I think it's exciting as a fan to see all this. Um, I was excited to talk about it. These are all 2024 schedules, and here's the deal. Uh, I'm going to try my best throughout the rest of this season to talk about 2023. Um, but, you know, when something comes up, uh, I, we, I, of course, will cover it. But I, uh, I did want to uh, – hit on this this time with the 2024 because they had the release show, and I think it's very exciting. I think the SEC is going to be the premier league in college football. I just don't see how you can say otherwise. I really don't. Um, this was a one-year deal for the eight game. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I hope they keep the eight-game schedule. I think I don't like the nine game schedule and it doesn't have anything to do with I, what I, what I don't like about it is, is I think it isn't, if you look at each individual year, I think it's an uneven schedule. It's uneven scheduling. You have teams that have five home games and you have teams that have four home games. You have teams that have five away games. You have teams that have four away games and it's unbalanced. So you got Alabama that's got two fairly easy games on the road and five home games. And then you've got, I don't know, South Carolina that has, you know, three tough as crap away games and only two fairly easy home games, you know, and, it's just – it's so unbalanced, and I do not like it. I actually hope that the SEC keeps the eight-game schedule, and we will see what happens. But I really, really like this schedule. I think it is just about as balanced up and down the board. You look at all the teams. I think it's just about as balanced as you can possibly get. I do think it's interesting that there's a few teams that have – you got Mississippi State that's got an East flavor. Um, Ole Miss has got an East flavor. You got Missouri that's got a West flavor. I think there's some interesting things to talk about. But when you talk about the balance of the scheduling up and down the board for 16 teams, I think it works out really, really great. Um, and they've done a, 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 a great job of putting this together in two weeks. So I just want to say that. And uh, remember to go to True Victory, our veteran-owned sportswear company, and check them out. Order something from Dad. Order that digital gift card for Dad. Um, if you are last-minute shopping, the Fanboys promo code, use it for a 15% discount. Scan our code there to the right of the screen. We are College Sports Cast. We do shows on Tuesdays and Thursday nights right now at 8 p.m. Sunday again in the fall when the season starts, we will we'll start back up our Sunday shows for our week wrap-up shows. But right now we are doing our shows on Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time. So join us then for our shows and I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, watching in replay, however you watch this. I appreciate it. Um, I will say that we are on. It's been scrolling on the bottom of the screen. 
we are part of the fanboys and we are featured on let's talk sports sideline sports and wsbn tv channel 30 download the boxcast app and we you can find us on apple tv roku fire tv and download that that boxcast app to find us on your tv wsbn tv channel 30 college sportscast all right guys we will see you on tuesday for our weekend wrap up of the college world series um and we will kind of give you an update of where everything is um there might still be a game or two to play before we know who's in the finals on Tuesday. Um, or if not, it'll wrap up that while we're on and, and we will kind of wrap that up on Tuesday. So join us on Tuesday and we will do a wrap up show of the college world series and any other college news that comes out. We appreciate you joining us for college sports cast.